Welcome back, 7th grade. We are about ready to start chapter 12 today uh, in your book. Um, some questions that we need to talk about. Uh, if you saw a farm, how does that relate to your environment? Well, there's grass and there's cows. Well, in your environment, you got to have grass to feed the cows, and then we eat the cows as hamburgers or steak. So we're going to talk about energy rules in the environment. So we're still on the whole ecology theme in Chapter 12, kind of like Chapter 11. Um, 278 to 279 is the reading. Make sure you fill in your note packet. And uh, 1 to 7 in science skills, I converted in the Google Forms the science skills to just 8 more questions. But there's only 3 answer choices for each one. So, without that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we got to start out with producers and consumers. A producer, often called a autotroph, means it can make its own food. Auto meaning self, like automobile is self-propelled. An autotroph makes its own food, usually by photosynthesis. If you're at the bottom of the ocean, it can be hemosynthesis. They use sulfur from the volcanoes. So plants, algae, trees grass, things like that are going to be photosynthetic. In the ocean, it's the phytoplankton. So producers capture this energy, whether it's from sunlight or from sulfur. Consumers get their energy by eating producers or eating other consumers. Here are some types of consumers that you've probably heard of before. A herbivore. In Latin, H-E-R-B, herb, is plant. So a herbivore, vor means to eat, these eat plants. Carn, in Latin, means meat. So carnivores are animals that eat other animals. They're meat eaters. Omnivores eat both plants and animals. Uh, examples of herbivores. Squirrels, deer, cows, horses are herbivores. Uh, other types of herbivores you've probably heard of. Zebras, um, lots of all of the gazelle and plains animals. Buffalo are herbivores. Giraffes are herbivores. Carnivores are your main types of predators. Every type of cat, lynx, bobcat, Technically, you call them a house cat. Tigers, lions, all carnivores. Other types of carnivores. Your dogs, foxes, wolves, coyotes, all carnivores. What about a bear? Well, bears are not necessarily carnivores. Bears will eat fish. They will eat deer but they also eat a lot of insects and plants. So bears are omnivores. They will eat plants and animals, so that means they eat both. We, as humans, eat both. We eat plants and we eat animals. Scavengers eat animals that have been killed by others. We see it all the time. When you're traveling on the highway and there's a dead deer, you see turkey vultures, you see crows eating the deer. Sometimes coyotes in this area will be scavengers too. Hyenas in Africa can be scavengers. Ants, beetles, crows, and worms are all scavengers. Decomposers are the ones you don't see. Decomposers break down the material of the dead organisms, whether it's dead grass in your yard because you cut the grass, or it could be the dead deer laying along the highway. These are going to be your bacteria and your fungi that actually break down the nutrients so that it goes back into the soil. Everything on Earth gets recycled again. So these, this is a vulture, there's your crow, and then there's some types of fungus. This is a picture of a food web from the Chesapeake Bay. Now, we don't live by the Chesapeake Bay, but if you've ever been to Maryland and or Virginia, 
you've crossed over the bay. So on this, there are producers and consumers. The producers here, it says, what are the producers in this picture? This picture is in your notes, by the way. Phytoplankton, aquatic vegetation, and then vegetation that can actually come up out of the water, like reeds and cattails and things. Well, then you have the primary consumers. Your herbivores are what we call a primary consumer. They're the first to eat it. In this case, there's zooplankton, which are teeny tiny little things that eat phytoplankton. Uh, invertebrates, and then ducks. And it literally works its way up until you hit the top of the food chain. So you go with primary consumers being plankton and small fish, bigger fish, that's a striped bass, which if you've ever eaten it from the bay, absolutely delicious. And the larger types of sea ducks. And then finally, the top of the, tur the food chain in the Chesapeake Bay, we have the offspring and the bald eagle. I used to live near the bed. The eagles are beautiful. They're there. Um, and I actually saw ospreys once. I saw way more eagles than I did ospreys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, one quick thing here. Just remember, so on your food chain, you've got to have a producer. We have a primary consumer, which we call a herbivore. We can have a secondary consumer, which could be, um, so let's say your herbivore was a cow. If you eat the cow, the human, can be the secondary consumer. One of my favorite foods is hamburgers, so that's why I was thinking of it. And let's say that you go out in the woods and a grizzly bear gets you. That makes the grizzly a tertiary consumer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to click back, make sure that you know your assignment for today, and then we'll be done. So make sure you fill in your notes. There's no little extra videos in here. Um, 278 to 279, get your questions done. I'll see you next time.